Hello, children of God. Have you ever played the game Simon Says? It's pretty simple, right? If Simon says do something, you do it. And if Simon doesn't say, then you're not supposed to do it. Well, today we're going to play that game, but it's a slightly different feature. We're going to play Elisha Says. Elisha was a prophet in the Old Testament in the Bible. We're going to have a story about him today, but because we're featuring him, we're going to play Elisha Says. Are you ready? Listen carefully. Smile. Oh, good job. I didn't catch you. Thought maybe I could sneak one in there. All right. Elisha says, show me your teeth. Smile. Elisha says, stick out your tongue and I'll waggle it around. Okay. Elisha says you can stop. Elisha says, tap your nose seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Elisha says, spin around in a circle four times. One, two, three, four. Elisha says, meow like a cat. Meow. Elisha says, flap your wings like a chicken. Elisha says, clap and snap seven times. Now, are any of these things sounding strange? You've done a great job. You can sit down if you were standing up. But it seems like I was asking you to do some sort of odd things. I mean, maybe not for the game Elisha says, but those wouldn't be things you would just do on a normal basis. And why all the repeating? Has anyone ever asked you to do something that you thought was odd, weird, something that you kind of didn't want to do? Maybe your parents asked you to do something around the house that you really didn't want to do. Well, sometimes there are things that we're asked to do, instructions that we receive, that sound a little bit bizarre, or maybe they just don't sound fun, and we'd rather not do them. But there are a lot of times where, well, even God asks us to do things that we might not want to do, but we need to have faith and obey him anyway. See, this reminds me of a story from the Old Testament. Like I said, there was this prophet and his name was Elisha. He followed Elijah, which can be very confusing. But anyways, there was a man who was a soldier. He was a really good soldier and he worked for a king in another area. His name was Naaman. Yes, his name was Naaman. That gets confusing too. Anyways, Naaman was a very good soldier, but he had leprosy, a disease that would make all kinds of icky things happen. Sometimes your body parts would fall off or you'd get weird spots all over you or all kinds of stuff. And you couldn't be in contact with anyone because you were sick and diseased and you didn't want to get anyone else sick also. So anyway, Naaman had leprosy and it kind of made him sad because he couldn't go out or be with anyone. Well, there was a servant working in his house who was actually from Israel, from where God's people lived. And she said, you know, there's this guy. I know a guy. He's a prophet. He's a man of God. I'll bet he can tell you how to fix your leprosy. So Naaman, well, he didn't know what else to do. He sent for this man. He actually went out to Israel and presented himself to the king of Israel and said, hey, I hear you can fix leprosy. And the king went, what are you talking about? I don't know what's going on. But Elisha heard about this and said, oh, wait, let me check this out. So Elisha told Naaman, here's what I want you to do. Go to the Jordan River and wash yourself seven times. And after you do that, you'll be healed. Well, at first Naaman thought that was a really weird thing to ask him to do. He thought that was a very strange instruction. In fact, he didn't want to do it. He's like, what are you talking about? There are better rivers I could wash myself in. There are better things I could do. Why don't you just call on your God and he'll cure me? Why are you asking me to go bathe in a river? That's weird. But fortunately, Naaman had some smart servants who said, look, you don't know what it's going to do. Maybe this guy could heal you. If he'd asked you to do some wild, crazy thing, you'd probably do it. So just go take the baths. And Naaman did. And after seven times bathing in the Jordan River, guess what? That's right. He was healed. And he was amazed and he said, wow, this is awesome. 
God really does do amazing things. And he does them through his people. And you truly are a prophet of God, Elisha. And Naaman's heart was changed because of what God had done. See, it wasn't the river that cured him. It wasn't Elisha that cured him. It was God. And Naaman was able to see that by trusting and walking out in obedience, God could do amazing things. And the same is true for us. It's kind of like if you've been baptized, you remember that Jesus died for your sins and washed them all away, like that Jordan River did. Well, it's not the water that washes them away. It's God. It's his spirit working in and through you that makes these things happen. And sometimes we're given directions that maybe we don't like. Maybe your mom asks you to do something you don't like. Maybe someday God could ask you to do something you don't like. Maybe you wind up changing jobs or moving to a new place or doing something that you'd rather not do. But when we trust God, when we follow him, amazing things can happen. We have to be kind of willing to step out, to walk in faith and do things that sound weird or do things that we don't want to do. And when we're willing to trust God, he can work in us to do amazing things because he has already bought us with his blood, conquered sin and death, and done more than we could imagine. So why not trust him to do other things and take care of us in our lives? No matter what, no matter how bizarre or strange the instructions seem, listen to God, follow his voice. It's a lot better than any Simon Says game. You should always follow what God says. Trust his word, the Bible, and trust him. Well, why don't we say a prayer to thank God for always being with us and ask him to help us trust in him. Dear God, thank you for your instructions. Help us to follow them and trust in you, even when it's difficult or even when we don't understand. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's just one way to share the story of Naaman, but it's important to remember that there is trust and that God can do amazing things when we trust. Isn't that right, kitty cat? I have a willing and captive audience here. I hope you do too. And I hope that you join us again because we do have message ideas and crafts coming out every week to bless you and your ministry, wherever and with whomever it might be, even cats. So go make some disciples. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.